Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Baltic Aquascarf. This watch is available from BalticWatches.com for €713. Euro. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the watch comes in a watch box, which is protected by this outer cardboard watch box. And this is the watch box itself. As you can see, hinge lid to the watch box, and we have a grained finish to the vinyl plastic. Very nicely executed, good quality finishing to it. And the interior is finished to a good standard, fully upholstered with a velour fabric. And the watch sits in the base on a padded velour upholstered cushion. So very nice presentation, and one immediately gets the impression that the Baltic Aquascarf is a quality mid-tier piece. With regards to the other items, this is the owner's instruction manual, clear concise diagrams. The instructions are bilingual, both in English and French. It details the operation of the movement use, which is the Miyota Calibre 9039 automatic, and also the terms and conditions of the two-year guarantee. So, very good quality, high definition pictures and diagrams, very well crafted owner's instruction manual. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Baltic Aquascarf. We're looking at the black silver version. The watch is also available in a blue version, and it's also available on a bracelet if this tropic style strap isn't your personal taste. With regards to the specifications, we have a 39mm case diameter, we have a 47mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 12mm, and a lug width of 20mm. The Tropic style strap tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the buckle and tang. And as you can see, the solid 316L grade stainless steel buckle is signed to high standard with the Baltic logo engraved. Nice heavy gauge to the buckle and the mirror polishing is flawless. No sharp edges, no burrs, and it does match the aesthetic of this being a vintage Tropic style strap. One keeper to the strap, nice proportion to it. So I'll show you the underside. One thing I really like about these Tropic style straps is they have a textured underside and they're fully perforated. So this allows for air circulation and also sweat and perspiration to wick away from the wrist. And it also allows for sea water to wick away from the wrist so they dry out very quickly. So it's a very good iconic design and I like the textured finish to the top side. It is absolutely beautiful. I love the perforations to it. So it's very good looking but also very comfortable. Credit where credit's due, Baltic have used stainless steel quick release spring bar, so one doesn't need a spring bar tool to remove the strap, but in the lugs we also have holes, so if you're fitting the bracelet or alternatively straps with a spring bar tool, you can use the holes in the lugs and that means it's very easy to change the strap. So with regards to the rest of the specification, we have a double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside. And as you can see, the clear anti-reflective coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver mirror polished pencil hands and also the double dome sapphire crystal. The double dome sapphire crystal does give the aesthetic of a vintage plexiglass, hesalite or acrylic domes crystal, but of course sapphire is more hard and scratch resistant. And so one gets the look of a 1950s or 1960s dive piece, but of course modern day enhancements with regards to the hardness and the th scratch resistance. So it does look like an acrylic crystal because it's very thick, but the double dome means that one doesn't get the characteristic distortion one would get with a single domed crystal with a flat underside. So very good quality, clear AR coating. I like the perfect symmetry to the sandwich dial, and the sandwich dial has a nice grained textured finish to it rather than being enamel black and glossy and it is very aesthetically pleasing. Now the benefit of it being a textured grained finish to the dial is that it also refracts the light rather than being reflective and shiny as per a black enamel dial and that cuts down some of the reflection and also the fact the uh, indices are sandwiched, they're cut outs in the dial rather than being applied or printed indices, again that reduces the reflection. The pencil hands are well proportioned, the minute hand extends all the way to the minute ticks on the chapter ring and the second hand also extends fully to the minute ticks, so they've got the proportions of the pencil hands correct. And I love the symmetry of it with the triangles at 9, 6 and 3, and then good orientation because we've got the 12 Arabic numerals at 12 o'clock. I like the fact that dial isn't overbranded with the necessary text or specification, we simply have the Baltic brand logo at 12, and then Aquascarf 200M at 6 o'clock, so just the right amount of information. 
Now one of my favourite aspects to the piece is the fully loomed sapphire bezel insert. It gives the impression of Bakelites. Bakelite bezels were used on vintage pieces from the 1960s and 1970s. And Bakelite was very aesthetically pleasing because the Bakelite was see-through, it was translucent. But of course it was soft like acrylic and therefore prone to being scuffed and scratched. So this sapphire bezel insert gives the impression of a Bakelite bezel insert but of course sapphire is harder and more scratch resistant as per the double dome sapphire crystal. And it's fully loomed which is very strong specification so I really like the look of it. It reminds me of a Blancpain 50 Fathoms bezel insert. It's very good looking. I like the Arabic numerals at 15, 30 and 45 and then the loomed triangle at 12 o'clock. So it's just beautifully designed, nice glossy finish to the sapphire, and it really does look like a Bakelite's bezel. The bezel itself is solid 316L grade stainless steel, gear tooth profile to it. Now, the quality of the finishing to this bezel is absolutely outstanding. It's the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a Tudor Black Bay. That is the level of finishing. And bear in mind, this is €713. Euro. We're not looking at a piece that costs €3,640 as per the Black Bay 58. But that is the level of the finishing to this gear tooth profile bezel. Bus satin finish to the top chamfer to it, so no sharp edges. Very well finished. But absolutely gorgeous detail because underneath we've got flawless mirror polishing to the undercut underneath the gear teeth so it's one of the best finished bezels I've, I've seen on a watch no sharp edges but but it does feel very grippy and tactile to use and it just looks absolutely gorgeous with regards to the finishing to the head of the piece brass satin finish to the tops of the lugs and that complements the longitudinal brass satin finishing to the flanks absolutely flawless one can see the grain of the 316L grade stainless steel beautiful luster to the brass satin finishing and I like the low profile to the flanks. They've got a, a good undercut, which means that it looks very thin. And also it's very comfortable because it doesn't have a sharp underside to the flank of the case digging into the wrist. So it's just a very good looking piece. I love the undercut to the bezel and also like the low profile undercut to the flanks to the case. So with regards to the case back, it's solid 316L grade stainless steel. Screw down case back provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters of water resistance. And this is incredibly well engraved, as you can see, nice waves engraved to it with a diver. And around the circumference, we have the specification and the reference number of the piece. The circumference of the screw down case back has milled slots, no sharp edges, no burrs, very well machined and also mirror polished to a flawless standard. Very low profile, and that's one of the benefits of this using the Miota Calibre 9039 because it's a very thin movement, and therefore they've been able to reduce the thickness of this piece down to only 12 millimeters, even though it has a double dome sapphire crystal. Case back is very smooth and very comfortable to wear against the wrist for long periods of time, such as eight to 12 hours per day. The quality of the engraving to this case back is some of the best I've seen. It's just incredible, bearing in mind that this is a mid-tier price point piece. This is the kind of finishing I would expect to see on a high-tier piece, costing in excess of €10,000. So it is incredible finishing. Very well done. Right, so let's test the crown. Solid 316L grade stainless steel crown, coin edge finished, mirror polished, chamfered to it. And we also have a matte bee blasted effect background to the embossed mirror polished bee for Baltic. So very well finished. Let's test the action. Silky smooth. Absolutely 10 out of 10. This is perfect screw down crown execution. It cannot be improved upon. This is perfect. It's an example to other brands of how to get a screw down crown correct. No resistance whatsoever. Perfect interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. So the screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters. In the first position, it's the manual wind position, and one can manually wind the Miyota Calibre 9039 to top it up to its maximum 42 hour power reserve. Absolute pleasure to manually wind, one can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. It feels very smooth, much smoother than a Calibre PT5000 or an SW200-1, alternatively ETA2824-2. The 9039 has a very smooth feeling to it when manually winding. Light resistance to the mainspring, one can gradually feel the tension building up, but it feels light. It doesn't have as much resistance as a PT5000, so it's a very pleasant manual wind automatic movement. So with regards to the crown positions, we only have one click position, which is very good. 
The 9039 is effectively the no-date version of the 9015. They're both personal favourite Miyota movements. I really like them. So the architecture of the 9039 is the same as the 9015. They just delete the date complication. There's no date will. So there's no phantom date setting position. Just one click on the crown. So Baltic deserve credit. They've made the correct decision by using the 9039 versus the 9015, which has a date complication. No back play whatsoever, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Good firm resistance to the 9039. It feels like a good solid movement. Silky smooth clockwise and anti-clockwise. Much smoother than an NH35A. And I would say it's smoother than an SW200-1. I really like the smooth list, but the firm resistance of the gearing. So it has hacking. As you can see, I've now hacked the second hand. One can set the time precisely to the second. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. So let's test screwing the crown back down. Immediate thread pickup. This is incredible. This is this is Rolex twin lock or trip lock quality. That is the level of quality. It feels just as smooth as the screw down crown on my Tudor Black Bay 58. It really is incredible. Bearing in mind this is a mid tier piece at 713 euro. It's outstanding. So I really like the screw down crown execution. So let's test the bezel action. 120 click unidirectional bezel as one would expect. It feels even all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation, nice and smooth. It's got a firm resistance, it feels firmer than a Seiko 5KX or a Seiko Turtle. In terms of resistance, it feels tight, it feels like a Steinhardt Ocean 139, that's the level of resistance. I like that firm resistance, one has to give it, give it a good turn. But I like the fact it's tight because we have no lateral side side play, no back play whatsoever, it's a good tight 10 out of 10. 120 click unidirectional bezel. So let's check the alignment. Nice loud audible clicks as well. It feels very good to operate and it sounds very satisfying. Perfect. I'm just going to check it again. It feels very smooth even all the way through the 360 degrees but it does have firm resistance so that does take some getting used to because the resistance to the bezel is firmer. It's got a really solid ratcheting mechanism. One can feel the click spring underneath the bezel engaging with 120 clicks. And I actually like that, so I prefer tighter bezel action rather than a loose bezel action. Really satisfying clicks, the loud audible clicks. Perfect alignment. The loomed triangle perfectly aligns with the 12 o'clock tick on the chapter ring and also the 12 o'clock Arabic numerals. So 10 out of 10 bezel execution. It cannot be improved upon. It really is an example to other brands of getting the bezel execution perfect. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, minor criticism is the Tropic Style strap is just a fraction too short for my 8 inch wrist. As you can see, had they made the strap an inch longer, it would fit my 8 inch wrist, but for the majority of collectors with a 6 to 7 inch wrist, this strap will fit you no problem whatsoever. The watch is also available on a bracelet if this Tropic style strap isn't your personal taste. So this will actually fit up to an eight and a half, uh, sorry, a 7.5 inch wrist, and if you have a 6 to 7 inch wrist, this will suffice. Now, the Tropic strap is incredibly soft and comfortable. I like the feeling of the rubber, it feels stiffer than silicon rubber, it feels more like FKM rubber, alternatively vulcanized rubber, and it, although it is stiffer than silicon, I'm confident it's going to be very durable and last for a good length of time. Very soft and supple, although it does feel thicker and more harder and stiffer than on a silicon rubber strap. The Tropic rubber strap really complements the vintage aesthetic of this piece. It really looks like a 1950s or 1960s vintage dive piece but reissued to modern day specifications with the double dome sapphire crystal and the sapphire bezel insert. Absolutely gorgeous. This is only 83 grams on the Tropic style strap, so incredibly lightweight piece. 39 millimeters is a nice wrist presence, but we have a relatively short 47 millimeter lug to lug measurement. I consider 48 millimeters to be perfection. That is the sweet spot, regardless of whether you have a six to seven inch wrist or a seven to eight inch wrist respectively. A 47 is just one millimeter below perfection, but for smaller wrist sizes of six to seven inches, you'll find that this fits you very well. Beautiful curved profile to the undercut of the case. It wraps around the wrist very well. One doesn't get the abhorrent gap underneath straight flat lugs as per the Steinhardt Ocean 139, for example. This wraps around the wrist very well. 
Really good case shape, nice taper to the lugs. And they've made the correct choice by having a 20 millimeter lug width, which does work very well with the 30 millimeter head of 39 millimeter head of the piece. The grained textured finish to the dial works very well because it reduces the reflection of the dial and the clear AL coating is outstanding. It does do a very good job of reducing the reflection to the silver mirror polished pencil hands. So absolutely gorgeous piece to look at. 12 millimeters is very surprising. I would expect this to be 13 because of the double dome sapphire crystal and 200 meters of water resistance. And had they used the NH35A or the NH38, this would be 13 millimeters. But that's the benefit of it being a Miyota 9039 automatic power piece. It's only 12 millimeters thick. So it will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. I absolutely love the double dome sapphire crystal. It's just gorgeous the way it distorts when one tilts it at an oblique angle. And then straight on, it's got perfect clarity, as you can see. Sandwich dial is outstanding. I love the chapter ring in silver and also the sandwich dial. You can see the cutouts of the triangles. Just beautiful to look at. Gorgeous piece. Feel good factor is outstanding. Comfort level is outstanding. And the case back is very smooth and comfortable against the wrist. The engraving doesn't feel sharp as per the Steinhardt Ocean 139. So very well finished. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged. And as you can see, it has not disappointed. The fully loomed sapphire bezel inset is loomed with C3 Superloom Nova. Nice hour ticks. And then we've also got the fully loomed Arabic numerals 15, 30 and 45 and the loomed triangle. So the ceramic bezel, the sapphire bezel inset is outstanding. The cutouts in the sandwich dial are very good because we've got a full disc of C3 Superloom Nova beneath the grained finish to the dial. And as you can see, the orientation is outstanding because we've got the fully loomed 12 Arabic numerals and also nine, six and three triangles. So the ori orientation, the symmetry of the dial is good. The color match of the green C3 Superloom Nova on the sapphire bezel inserts, the sandwich dial and the pencil hands is good and it's glowing brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. So I'm pleased to see that Baltic haven't cut any corners with regards to the quality of the C3 Superluminova they've used. And the green tone really does match the aesthetic of this looking like a vintage piece because it's like tritium loom, which was used in the 1950s and 1960s. Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favorite aspects of the piece. This uses the Miyota Calibre 9039 automatic, which is made in Japan. So the 9039 has been in use since 2018. At this stage, it's a reliable, well-proven workhorse automatic. Higher grade in quality to the NH35A and also the NH38. The 9039 is equal in quality to the 9015, which is the date version of it. And I would say the 9039 is equal quality to a Salita SW200-1 or alternatively an ETA2824-2. Now the thing I like about the 9039 is it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. And this is better than the lower grades of Miyota movements such as the 8215 and the 8315 which run at a 3 hertz frequency and a beat rate of 21,600. The reason is if you look at this second hand it doesn't judder or stutter around the dial as per the 8215. This has a 4 hertz sweep. So that means it has a smooth sweep as per the SW200-1. And also I regard 4 hertz to be the perfect balance. It gives the perfect compromise between power reserve and accuracy. Hand rolling and hacking, which is for complications. 42 hour power reserve is very good. The stated accuracy of the 9039 is minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day. This one is running consistently at plus three seconds per day, which is actually within chronometer limits of minus four to plus six. Minus, uh, sorry, plus three is outstanding accuracy within chronometer uh, limits. So I'm very impressed with the accuracy of the 9039 and 42 hour power reserve is good. And I actually prefer this. The 9039 is a better movement in terms of the operation of it. The crown feels silky smooth when manually winding. It feels smoother than a PT5000. It's a lower profile movement than the NH35A and the 38. 
and that means this is only 12 millimeters with a very low profile flat case back so I would like to see more brands use the 9039 but of course this is a mid tier piece made in France Baltic watches are designed and made in France and therefore of course this is a more expensive piece it's 713 euro it's not made in China Chinese brands cannot compete with this level of quality. This is a level above San Martin's quality and it fully justifies the price because it's made in France and the 9039 really is equal in quality to the SW200-1 and the ETA2824-2. It's the correct choice of movement. So no negatives to the movement whatsoever. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the Watcher Meet 2 criteria, it should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. Yes, this is unquestionably excellent quality and yes, it is unquestionably excellent value at €713. Euro. When it's getting a piece which is made in France and it uses a very high grade Miota 9039. And really, there are no negatives to this watch whatsoever. It's absolutely loaded with the specification. Clear AR coating on the underside of the Dub Dome Sapphire Crystal, fully loomed sapphire bezel insert with C3 Superluminova, 200 meters. The quality of the finishing throughout is 10 out of 10. The build quality is 10 out of 10. The materials, the specification, everything about this watch is 10 out of 10. No negatives to it whatsoever. They've got everything correct. Quick release spring bars on the underside to the Tropic strap. It's just an outstanding piece. I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money, and I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Baltic Aquascarf. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.